Hello, everybody, and good evening. This is Franz Calamari, and today is January 22nd, 2022. It is another fine day in the coronavirus pandemic. Now in its season two, if I recall correctly. No, season three, right? 2020, 2021. Season three of COVID-19. I can't believe they haven't canceled this show yet. Well, nonetheless, here we are. Another fine day in Napoleon Total War Darth Maud Hardcore Realism, and this is a wonderful battle where I am fighting alongside my good buddy JT. I am the French, he's the Swedes, fighting against Mobster, who is a Danish army deployed here, and our other buddy Panama Chong, who is deployed here as the Spaniards. You can see his big old thick Spanish deployment zone that goes the entire, well, about three, two-thirds of the back map, about maybe a little more than 50%. Let's talk about the map. All slow-mo here, so don't miss anything too crazy. We'll dive right in. This is the Battle of Talavera, which for those of you who know Sharp, I'm sure you will have a few memories invoked by that. For those of you who don't, you're missing out. I know it's not a historically accurate show, but I'll be damned, it's an entertaining one. The points on the map. You have this town here on the mini-map. I'll stop moving the camera so we can just kind of focus on the top, right? This is a four-pointer here. Now, for reference, I'm the French. That is my army here on the mini-map. So really, let's orient this from our perspective, right? Let's orient this a little bit. As my cat is on my desk wondering what I'm doing. Hello, Bilbo. Meow, meow, meow. So, from our perspective, right? So, this is the map. These are the French here. This is my deployment zone. These are the Swedes here. This is the Swedish deployment right here. The Danish player is here, excuse me. This is the Spanish player right here. We have a four-pointer over here, right there, that you can see. That's a four-pointer. We have this town here. Off in the foggy distance, this town here is worth one point. Then over here, we have, actually not over there, but rather, oh, yeah, here we go, right over here. Right in front of this lovely Danish spawn, we have this basically little fortress. If you can garrison 500 men, it has a low wall, a courtyard, I believe it's a two-story house. So the back, this is a just a little bit of a fort right here. You've got the big old Danish deployment right there. That's worth the one point. And then back in the Spanish spawn, we have a two-pointer. So we have two here, one there, another one-pointer here. This city over here is worth one. And then we have this four-pointer back here to the left of the Spanish, or I'm sorry, uh, the French line. So let's talk about the calculus of battle here. What do we do? Well, the Danish player is deploying on a supremely powerful position of strength. He has this hill here. He could put artillery on. He's immediately going to be in a good spot, maybe not even 30 seconds out of the game. Just roll 10 feet up this hill and unlimber. That's a great spot. He's got this house guarding his right. And also, look at the way you've got to approach this mountain. you got to go through this uh, riverbed, which is going to slow you down significantly. Not only that, but then you got to go through trees, which is going to slow you down even more. Then you got to charge uphill against an enemy on a higher ground, which in this mod gives them increased morale. It ain't good. Let's say you want to flank and turn the position. Okay, good luck with that one, because guess what? It's the same thing, no matter which way you approach this hill. A, a, a riverbed, and yes, no trees, but this still sucks. You're still charging uphill. And what if you don't want to do that? Well, good luck getting this house, because that's what you got to do. You have to charge over open ground against a battery that's probably shooting right over this thing at you over open ground, and then you got to fight 500 men in this house while getting shot from basically layers of fire from the enemy. It ain't good. So what do you do about this hill? Well, I'll give you a spoiler. You don't. You go somewhere else. You don't need this point to win. We were looking at the map, and we determined, and I'll pause the game here because we're about to start. If we grab this four-pointer here, this four-pointer, right? The city's here. And if we do the calculus on the map, there's one, this is worth two, so that's one, three, four, five, five plus four is nine. Nine points on the map. If you control five points, you win. So what do you do? Well, this is one, this is four, that's your five. Boom, right there. And what's crazy about it is look at how it works. You can deploy a nice line along this road. A very nice line along this road, or even using this road. And you can use this river to create a natural barrier. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to sidestep where the Danish player is going to deploy, because that's where he wants us to fight, right? This is the natural position of strength of this army, these two divisions. 
from the get-go, they have the most superior point on the map. It would be dumb to try to run up this hill. So we're going to say, how about no? Let's go anywhere else. And so that's kind of what we decide to do, is we're going to go somewhere else. We are going to walk up this road, and we are going to make a serious push to get into this city first. The Swedish player who is JT. JT is not the most experienced at this mod, but he is good at the game, and he's still learning how to do certain things, but he knows what he's doing enough to kind of fight a battle in a way that is going to hurt someone. And then me, well, I'm the French, and I'm back here, and, well, you know my replays. I, I'm, I, I know what I'm doing. I'm not going to say I'm the best, because there's definitely better players than me out there. I'm just a nerd who knows how to play a game. But I, you know, I can, I can hold a fight. And I'll bring up the rear, and what I'll do is I will hold this open ground, and all he's got to do is just garrison this central building in this city. And if he garrisons the building, as long as he's controlling it overwhelmingly, we're good. He's got to take his most elite unit, which I believe is a Queen's Lifeguard Grenadier Battalion or something. Uh, where is it? It's uh, blah, 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 blah. where is it? It's it's in here. He took it. Maybe it's over here still. Maybe he hasn't moved it. Uh, how is her lifeguards afoot? Where is it? Blah, 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 blah. It's somewhere in this blob. Here it is. Grenadier, Grenadier Corps. This Grenadier Corps. All he has to do is take these guys and chuck them in that house. And he'll have it unlocked. Good luck getting these guys out. And that's basically the battle. I'll go over my army briefly and then we'll press play. Very, very simply, I've got all right, so just two standard French 8-pound batteries, one of which is artillery at pied, which is a really solid one. I've got a heavy cavalry brigade, a medium cavalry brigade, as well as a contingent of hussars for light cavalry reconnaissance. I've got some tirailleurs, I've got two conscript battalions, as well as one of my favorite units in the game, because it is just so goddamn flavorful, the famous French assault column, 340 angry grenadiers, and or I think these are just fusiliers of the line, yeah, an angry bunch of fusiliers of the line formed up prepared to slam into someone and then of course me and my thematic armies i always take a good flavorful mix a bunch of fusiliers my conscripts as i said some young guard the young guard were the core of uh my army this was my backbone these uh kind of were my uh my reserve knockout i always kind of put them where i just needed a reliable unit they didn't play too much of a central role in this battle but i i kind of had them i had them always somewhere that i just needed something reliable i didn't have to worry about and that's how i used them in this battle my favorite, just generic Fusilier regiment, the uh, 18 Regiment d'Infanterie de Ligne Les Braves. I probably butchered that. If you're French, I apologize. Then I've got the Hibernians, as well as another Fusilier battalion. And of course, I special mention, oh, I'm sorry, I also had the Poles. Poland in this period, just what a fantastic history the Poles had during the Napoleonic Wars. If you ever want to read a crazy story, read about the, the Duchy of Warsaw and, and the, the Polish effort of uh, basically nation statehood during the Napoleonic period. You really got a feel for them. Fusiliers, and then of course, another, er, the, my second battalion of conscripts. So, you know, every okay, great cavalry, cool, who cares? But the one thing I will say is if you, dear viewers, if you ever play a Spanish map during the Peninsular War and you play the French and you do not take at least one squadron of dragoons, I will cry. How can you not bring Dragoons to a Peninsular War map? Come on, what's the point? Why bother playing the game? Why bother playing the game? So I brought two. Why bother playing? And the Swedes, you know, well, it's just pretty good. They got a lot of heavy cavalry. They got some light cavalry. They've got these really good Finnish sharpshoots in, as well as these Jaegers. Some very good uh, Fusiliers. Um, the Swedish are just a very good, very re reliable army. They're not exceptional, but they're good. And I'll give you this little piece of trivia. Before we let the game go on, this hat looks pretty Russian, doesn't it? Right? That Shaco? It's because it is. That is the Russian Cure. I probably butchered that pronunciation. I am so sorry. But this is actually the Russian hat. And here's tonight's trivia for the evening. The Swedish army during the Napoleonic Wars was actually led by a retired, um, well, not really the army, the actual Swedish king, long story short, there's a lot of detail that happened, you don't need to worry about it, but the Swedish king, at this point, when they're actually fighting in the field, was actually a Frenchman, Bernadot. Bernadot, Bernadotte, Bernadot, I believe it's Bernadot, oh well, again, sorry if you're French, my apologies. Uh, Bernadot was a Frenchman who was actually a retired general out of the French army, and uh, he basically was voted into power by the Swedes, again, long story short, they needed a king and he was there. Um, and they invited him 
Um, he had a reputation for humanity after treating Swedish prisoners of war respectably. So he won the respect of the Swedish people in that way. And uh, when they needed a new king, they sent him a letter and basically said, hey, you want the job? And he kind of looked at Napoleon and was like, do you mind? And Napoleon was like, I don't care. And so here they are. So the Swedes were actually governed by a French transplant king that became Swedish and converted to Lutheranism. However, that doesn't explain the hat. Why am I talking about the hat? Well, the thing is, is despite the French leadership, which was rather high-powered, because again, Bernadeau was a seasoned veteran. I'm not going to talk about his combat record, but just he knew what he was doing because he was a professional soldier in Napoleon's army. Despite that, it was economically bankrupt. The Swedes didn't really have the economy, they, they'd lost a lot of land to Russia in wars that happened in earlier parts of the Napoleonic period. They did not have the economy to really have a fully equipped army. So what do you do? Well, you got a uniform you want, but they couldn't even get um, as many um, uh, shakos and, and coats and shoes and even backpacks as they could. So their basic line infantry basically just picked up whatever they had. They would pick up French Shakos off the ground. They'd pick up Russian Shakos off the ground. They'd pick up Danish Shakos. They, if you were to look at a generic Swedish line unit, just pick one at random from the Napoleonic Wars that would be fighting in 1813 and 1814, like Leipzig and all that. There was a solid chance that you would just see a random assortment of hats from every or of headwear from every single major European army that they were close to. You'd see Prussian, you'd see Russian, you'd see French, you'd see some Swedish hats. They were actually supposed to have a top hat, not unlike, let's see if we can find it, they were supposed to have a top hat like, I guess this is a pretty close in-game representation. They were supposed to have a top hat like this, I think. Yeah, I guess that's the closest we're going to get. But they were not supposed to have... Uh, this hat that you're seeing on the line. So this in-game is really cool little detail, and I'm taking a few minutes to talk about it because it's just another little way that if you know what you're looking for, you can kind of see these little homages to the real history in the game. It would be better if they could provide variation for hats in this unit, but again, that's a lot of modding, and I'm not going to ask that. I'm happy to just play the game, and besides, you're usually not spending this much time looking at these units to notice these little details, but because I am who I am, of course I will. So, hey, you know what? If you're going to subscribe to the channel for any reason, Asinine Historical Commentary is the one, right? So this is a Russian Shako on a Swedish unit to represent their scavenging from other armies and other soldiers that are, you know, basically dead on the battlefield. So this is a really cool way of representing in-game the real-life supply problem for uniforms that the Swedes had. Anyway, I'll stop talking about dumb stuff, and let's get back to the battle. So deployment's about to begin. Let's fast forward. So again, you can see our deployment uh, strategy here. The Swedes are going to go along this road and just march as fast as possible here. I will do the same thing over here. I'm a little further back, so I'm going to take this road. The Spanish player's back here. The Dans are up here. And before the game fully gets in, uh, I'll talk about tonight's beverage of choice. This is the Constantine beer, brewed by, where is it? Here we go, Schilling Beer Company from Littleton, New Hampshire. It is an Austrian-style Marzen, which is an Oktoberfest-style lager. It is 5% alcohol by volume, one pint product of the USA. Made in humble little Vermont. Thanks, Bernie Sanders. All right, here we go. The game has begun. And as you could see, I mean, look at this. This is telling. Look, this was, uh, what was I telling you before this game really kicked off? Spanish General is right here, and obviously the idea is just go here and reinforce this hill. This is where having your eye on the prize is really important. They were focusing on this hill, which is fine, but this is just one point. There's eight other points on the map, and this is a game... Of map control it's not a, it's not just a game of killing the enemy army so we're like okay cool so that's great you can have this hill but we're gonna go there and this goes back to the military theory of a man called Kutuzov, which is don't be married to a, a point on a map be married to the idea of having an army to begin with. So I think the quote goes of the Russian army in 1812, so long as there is an army of Russians in Russia, the war goes on. And I'm probably butchering that quote, and I do sincerely apologize to anyone who knows it, but I think you can give me credit and do justice for at least attempting it. But the meaning is clear no matter how you say it. You want an army, less so you want a point on the map. George Washington during the American Revolution is a great example. As long as the American army persisted, 
the revolution could go on and the, and uh, the parliament and the crown forces could not really claim that they had won. So it was more important to retreat perpetually, even during the New York campaign, and cede the city of New York, which was occupied basically for the entire American Revolution, mind you, so long as the American army survived. Now this is an important moment, and I'll pause here. The Hussars run forward, trying to figure out, oh, is the frontal assault coming? Where is everybody? And they discover the Swedes are totally sidestepping it all. And you could just start seeing the troop movements pretty soon as they realize what the hell we're trying to do. I'm moving out my cavalry forces, my dragoons to the flank, my hussars over there. I'm keeping my old guard cavalry close by. I'm keeping my cheval leger close by. I'm throwing up my dragoon screen over here. I'm running anti-guerrilla patrols. We're fighting a Spanish player. The Spanish army does have some guerrilla cavalry units. Go, go figure, right? It's Spain during the Peninsular War, half thematic. We were worried that they might have something nearby. So you could see my columns have closed ranks. My artillery is covered by cavalry front and back. I've got squareable units on either side. I did not want my infantry or my, my artillery to be caught out by a unseen cavalry charge from the wood lines. And you could see I'm going to start moving cavalry units both ahead and far on the flanks to deal with it. And I'll just stop here for a second because I love these shots. You really get the feeling of this is an army on the march. This is why I played Darth Maud. That is one of the coolest scenes in anything. You know, in the developer interview I had with uh, Chewie, who is the uh, head mod, in fact, basically the, the only mod of this game, or modder of this game, uh... Sorry, I said that wrong. The developer of this mod. Not the developer of the game. The developer of this mod. Again, I'm just the guy who looks at unit stats, so I'm not really a modder. I just am the history monkey. Chewie's perspective on this mod is, effectively, this is more of a cinematic experience than a full-on Napoleonic simulator in detail. And you know what? That is, to me, such a good philosophy to have because it really is the spectacle and the, the, the magnificence of the period that kind of gives it its brand. Like, this is nuts. Like, just the Swedes pulling into this line, trying to cover their advance through these woods as the French columns move in the background. Where else? What other game are you going to play where you can get this scene? That is fucking awesome. It's like a movie. Fantastic hit by Imagine the Danish Howitzer. You can see the Danes were really deploying here. Really looking forward to us making a charge. This howitzer deployed facing a little bit downhill to fire. Here. They were really getting ready to take us down. Oh, these Cazadores Voluntarios de Madrid are a pain in the ass because they could shoot on horseback and they're going to whittle down men as the battle continues. Swedish player JT is going to start getting into some serious trouble because, first of all, two things. He's maneuvering a little too close to the enemy army. He should have been taking this road, which would have let us use these woods to conceal our movements, and it would have forced these armies, if they want, if they really wanted to attack him, to traverse this riverbed. And that would have meant, if they did that, and they had a bad time of it, it would have been hard for them to get back across. It would have been more difficult for them to retreat. But because he's so close to them, they just have to deploy basically on this road. And that's a problem. So he's so close to them, they A, can see him. Oh, another good shot on the line unit. Eesh. They're so close to him that they could see him and he's in shot range. That's the first thing. And the cavalry's going to play a consistent role harassing his flanks. But also, he's fighting a guy called Mobster. M-O-P-S-T-E-R. Mobster is a very good Danish player. I've played a few games with Mobster since this one, and Mobster has consistently impressed me with his ability to whip the Danes around. Just a few of these guys out, it was a good charge. Mobster has continuously impressed me with his ability to maneuver light infantry and Jaegers around to get maximum usage out of them. He loves whittling people down. These Sjellen Jaegers are one of his favorite units, and these sharpshooters are just a friggin' pain in the ass of anyone fighting him. So he knows how to... He is a very good light infantry commander. And that's a problem, because if you don't have hussars 
And right now, the meta of this game is people don't take Hussars because they think, oh, why not just take Heavy Cavalry? But that's the, that's why you take Hussars for this exact reason. Look, look at how quickly he can move these guys in. Under the eyes of the enemy. Look at how quickly he could charge these Hussars in. Under fire, mind you. And slam these Finnish Sharpshooters. This is a very good unit. He's going to cause a lot of friendly fire, number one. He's going to nail a lot of them, number two. And he's only suffered eight casualties for it. Even if this unit rats, it'll come back. 72, that's worth it. So he's killed almost 50 sharpshoots in for 8 troopers. That's a fantastic trade. Spanish cavalry really being a pain. And I've deployed my every French flag you see in these woods, including back here. This is just me checking for guerrilla cavalry. I didn't want it to come around... I didn't want to be hit on the sides, and once I kind of realized, okay, I don't think he has anything, I'm going to start deploying stuff in the line and breaking up the safety of the column. Artillery up here on the right. Eight-pound battery over here on the left. You could see the philosophy of the Spanish player here. He's going to... He, they're noticing what we're doing. The Danes crossing this river now, realizing it's clear. This is the rear guard action of the Swedish army. Moving brigades forward, doing a peel maneuver, basically like a real. If I, I think it's called the Australian peel. Yeah, moving grenadiers into this ruin, I think, just to, just to have it stacked, just in case. I, I, it makes this sense. Not enemy. a terribly necessary defensive line, since I don't think we had a. I think, judging by our movements, I think it was very clear we never got it. But you know what? You can't blame him for taking that. Keeps him safe and gives him a spot to be a pain in the ass and. But anyway, a very clear intention here of the Swedish division to move into the city. And now the Spaniards are going to try to run troops up here and cavalry to head them off. Because basically, if they can get us here, we've been used, we've used a sixth of the game time to maneuver to the city. And if they can catch us in a fight here, it's very doubtful that we can go anywhere else to try to recapture those points. Because now they really have a good position of strength by basically being here, if they were to get this city... We'd have to fake it, make a hole somewhere. And our whole army is basically back here. You know, we're basically in a massive column, if you think about it. Uh, come on. Yeah, as these fuse leaders get caught out by a Hussar charge. Hussars are good for that lightning thrust. Again, a good play by Mobster. And this was the problem. Look, we're starting to get headed off by the Spanish infantry and the cavalry. So what sir, do I have to do? Sir, our general I have to move attack. in my cavalry to try and deal with it. My entire cavalry brigade. Now, normally I would advise people against doing what I'm suggesting here. What, uh, uh, doing what I'm uh, uh, executing here. I always say preserve your cavalry. Don't be reckless. Don't be feckless. Save it for later. But this was a moment where we had to do something by virtue of what's going on. I needed to put my cavalry forward here to be able to head off the noose that was beginning to develop around the entry to the city. I had to keep this road open so he can get in here and put his uh, Grenadier Corps in this building. I had to do something. And also, I know we're fighting the Spanish over here. The Danish are going to be over here somewhere with most of their cavalry because that's just where their army is and they don't really know where I am. Look at most of my stuff here. Most of my line is hidden. They don't really know where I am. The only things they know where, where, where they are are my batteries. Because I'm now engaging the enemy with artillery. But they don't know where my force is, so they're going to keep their cavalry relatively cautious over here in the flank. But my cavalry is just pound for pound better. And he's got fusiliers here on this road where they can't form a square. I'm going to take advantage of that. Ooh, good charge. If I can keep this road open, then the Swedes can get in. And that's the end. I will put all of the cavalry I have here to try to make that possible. Walloon guards are a very good unit, but getting chewed up in fire. See a volley from the Walloon. We'll hang out here while we wait for it.
And then he's got to maneuver close to the enemy. So I've got old guard Grenadier Zashaval. A very powerful, but very heavy and very expensive cavalry unit. I have Dragoons. Another unit of Dragoons. I've got my Chevalier Lancers moving in. I'm going to actually march them around on the flank. I'm going to pull them out of this combat and move them around. I've got my Hussars in reserve that I'm going to start moving in. And he has finally arrived in force with his infantry to secure the town, or at least start securing it. And between my cavalry and his line extending here, while the Spanish Marines are going to be a pain in this garden, it's just not enough to turn the tide of this battle. There's just too much going on. We have too much stuff here. And I've got two heavy cavalry, and two good cavalry, frankly, versus the Spanish comparatively medium and light cavalry, to really worry too much about it. And there's a bit of a blunder here, which is he's formed a square with this Extremadora Fusilier Regiment. However, they're just going to fire into the back of their own cuirassiers, is the problem. JT doing a great job keeping the army flowing through here, disengaging and keep moving. I did have to encourage him once or twice, but you know what? That's okay. Sometimes when you're in the thick of it, it's really good to have that kind of... Uh, you know, voice of reason telling you, hey, you know what, don't get too engaged there. Keep moving, keep rolling. Don't get too caught out. Now the Danish cavalry moves in, but you know what, it's already too late, we're in the town. I'm just fighting this battle because I want to try to kill as many of the Spanish cavalry as possible. And these militia are going to start moving into a line position in the garden. The French marines have been pulled out with heavy casualties. But by now, the game... The, the line, rather, we've made is complete. The four-pointer back here is firmly behind our line. I have cavalry, or uh, uh, light, light infantry over here on the right to try to scout a little bit. I've got my line thrown out here. The Danes have actually disappeared off the map because they've got to maneuver through these woods. So the Danish army, except on the right where they're out in the open, is stuck in these woods. They've concentrated, and they're kind of in a traffic jam now with the rest of the Spanish line, which has to catch up with the, with the Swedish. So we've really hit this city hard. The whole Swedish army is going to begin deploying to so fortify this position. The Chevaux Lancier are going to move around as these grenadiers begin pulling into and fortifying this house. And let's just watch for a second from the perspective of the Chevalier Lanciers. I guess they'd be Chevalier Lancier, I'd imagine, right? Because, yeah, Lancier, I believe the French would be that way. Have a sip of my beer while we enjoy the spectacle. I love the helmet with the comb. It's so cool. I would love to get one. Just wear it around. See the micro around the city with these the cavalry, with these lancers. Hitting the side of the Spanish and the rear of the Danish heavy cavalry. That's going to rout the lifeguard of horse. It's going to contribute to the routing of the Spanish cuirassier, who are already pretty ble uh, bled out. Taking significant casualties here, but I've got Sult. I don't know if it's Sult or Sult. Ah, oh, man, I'm really butchering all these French pronunciations. Sorry, guys. French is not my strength. If it was Norwegian, I can help you, or even maybe German. Spanish as well, but French? Oh, good luck. The French infantry is online, pouring small fire in now that the line of sight is clear, but underneath the smoke are the remnants of all of the Spanish cavalry brigades, and that is an expensive pile of horses, my friends. And I didn't get away with that for free. I lost, as you can see. Look at what survives. Tatters of mine. But I still have some, including a relatively 
combat capable unit of French Hussars and Chevaux Leger. But more importantly, we hold the town. And now the Danes have become coming out of the forest. Began coming out of the forest. I will throw stakes down on my right to cover the extreme right of my army, just in case someone gets cheeky. A very good charge by the Grenadiers on this Swedish Fusilier unit. And this is kind of how you destroy an army in this situation, is you do death by a thousand cuts. You do clever, clever little charges in, but unfortunately these Grenadiers get caught out by this heavy cavalry unit. Lifeguards, of course. And because these Grenadiers were in melee, they're not going to be able to form square. Oh, I didn't even notice they got hit by their own artillery. Son of a bitch. Wow, that carried away a few Grenadiers. Wow, well, that explains why they routed. It wasn't just the cavalry. And their own lifeguards are going to try to come in and save them, but... It's just a weird... Everybody's being charged in the back moment. So now the Spanish have to go in with the bayonet and start... Quite literally stabbing the Swedes out of the city. But this Grendir core in this town, specifically in this big house in the center, it's not going to be easy. And to get there, he's got to go through two almost fresh units of line infantry backed up by fusiliers and militia, as well as Skuldebrand, which I believe is relatively close to how you pronounce it. The umlau over there oh, always screws me up. Very entrenched Swedish position now. JT did a very good job of maneuvering here and not getting drawn into a fight, but keeping his eyes on the prize. This was a very good play by him. We'll use. He's going to try to throw stakes out, but these uh, lifeguards get there just in time. Again, Mobster is a very good player, and Panama, who is the Spaniard, is going to fight tooth and nail for this. And we were very worried here, and he almost got it. He almost got it, but you know what? It was just. It was. Too big of it was too much to ask of his men to have him go in like that. Oof, shooting his own lifeguards in the back. That's an expensive uh, screw up. So now I'm going to begin moving in. I'm going to try to uh, engage these Sealand Jaegers in a meaningful way. These Sealand Jaegers, Mobster is just a son of a bitch with these guys. He really knows what he's doing. If you can get in musket range and hit them with weight of fire, as long as you can return fire to them, you're not in a bad spot. If you can return fire onto these Jaegers, you're having a good time. But you just gotta get there first. I don't know. Was he going for a charge with these guys? Oh no, I think maybe... Oh, maybe he was just confused. Uh, miscommunication in the orders. Cool play by Mobster again, getting the seven pound uh, howitzer with these hussars. That's good use of that depleted unit. You know what? They did a lot of work this game, and if the last thing they do is grab that seven pound battery, it's pretty good. And I've begun moving in. But the thing is, the Danes, while the Spaniards are blunted, the Danes are very strong. So the battle has now shifted. We are about 40 minutes in, 20 minutes into the battle. The battle has now shifted from being Sweden versus Spain to now being France versus Denmark. The battle for this city is effectively decided. There's not terribly much. <laughs> These two, sh <laughs> two, the pair of Grenadiers a cheval are going to decide they've had enough and they're going to go home. Can't blame them. How many chevrons? Three chevrons? Four chevrons? I don't know why it's not letting me see from here, but uh, they, they did their work. They can go home. But the battle for the town is over now. Well, what's got to happen is we have to hold this line. We have to make sure we hold on to this four-pointer. That's where the battle is now turned in. The Swedes have too much stuff. And yeah, the lifeguards are going to catch this battery out, but they're going to route a little bit, but not without killing a few of them. But the battle's now shifted from this town to this four-pointer. And this becomes a really cool, very, very classic line battle with a lot of really good tactics. So I've got my artillery deployed, firing in really good spots. And this is actually a moment where I will pause, and I made a very big mistake. I made a very big mistake early in the game, earlier than now. I walked past, basically, this little garden where he has his sharpshooters. This garden has stone walls in it that are low enough to be shot over. You can deploy a line behind it, and it will offer them cover. It's a grove, so it allows you to hide units, and he's got sharpshooters in it. Backed up by the Marine Corps of the Danes, which is a very, very good unit, as well as the Funen, 
with the Norwegian brigades to the left. I'm going to try to push real hard. That is a crazy shot right there, Jesus, with the muzzle flashes. I may have to screenshot that. That's a really cool shot. Wow. You know what I may do is I may do this. Oh, this guy being hit. Oh, wow. What a moment to pause. You can see the bullet hitting him on the shoulder. Oh, man. I love this game sometimes. It's it's just... You just get such cinematic moments out of it. That's the French Fusilier volley ripping through here. But he's got sharpshooters in here. Backed up by a really good series of units with Sjellen Jaegers in the flank, which is very good. I can't really ask the Swedish player to support me too much because he's got to clean up with the Spaniards before he can help me. Even though the Spaniards are bloodied, they've still got a lot of teeth, and the Danish army was rather large, and he's got elite, an, a brigade of elites on the right, backed up by Kastin Schild supporting. This, the Spaniards are bloodied, but they're not defeated quite just yet. So anyway, I had the opportunity early on to take this position. Instead, I moved over here, thinking this was better ground, and my logic was using this river, this riverbed, to slow down any possible advance, because I thought, you know what, this river basically is where my line should be anyway, because if I hold this river, I'll hold the four-pointer. It's a natural line to draw on. The problem is, is maybe it would have been better to have a battery deployed right here on the right, and then another battery deployed here, both of them watching, this one watching the open ground, and this battery here watching into here, or even having the battery here watching this position. And then I could have had my infantry in here, my interiors in here, my line deployed using this garden. This garden will be a beehive of activity for the Danish light infantry. And by not using it in the beginning of the battle, I give Mobster a really good position to just deal a lot of damage to my army throughout the course of the battle. And that will continue right up until the end. Oh, six-man horse battery. Oh, cool. You don't really see uh, horse artillery in this game right now because they're a little wonky. In the next patch, they're going to move a little faster. They're going to be resistant to fatigue so they can run. They're just not that good, but for moments like this when you want to get artillery rapidly up and you don't care about the energy expenditure, that's really nice to see. So that's a very flavorful move by uh, Panama, who's the Spanish general in this game. So I'm going to move forward and try to engage, but I, I did so in a helter-skelter way. I should have moved these brigades in faster. And by not doing so, I take a lot of hits on my fuse layers of line, and I'm outmatched by the Skellen Jaegers. I should have moved in more stuff to deal with these guys. And I'm spread thin. I'm relatively weak. I'm, I'm trying to attack everywhere. And when you try to attack everywhere, you are strong nowhere. Uh, uh, to attack properly, you need to be concentrated with reserves. I don't have reserves. I'm just throwing everything forward into a thin line. The only reserves I really have are the 18th Regiment of Line, and I've got my Attack Column, and I've got my uh, Hibernians, and I believe my Young Guard are... Where are they? Here we go. The Young Guard are over here on my right, bolstering the morale of the Conscripts. But he's got superiority. I've got a lot of units in mathematically losing regions. And I'm just trying to do damage right now, but this is kind of favoring the Danes in this moment. But you could see my intention here with this attack column. Look at the orders, right? Cute orders. I've got the order is going to go here, walking behind the battery. Then we're going to walk over here, walking behind the artillery up, or the eight pound battery in the right. And then we're going to walk over here. And then look what's happening. I'm going to pull off the other attacks. I'm going to fortify my position on the left. I'm going to be a link between the seven pound howitzer battery and my own artillery up yet. And I'm going to start concentrating forces on the right. I'm going to bring my Cheval Leger and my Dragoons over here on the right. You can see where my gears start turning. Because I'm looking at the Danes and I'm thinking, you know what? I have artillery. Let me make him walk forward. Let me try to get some hits on him. Our men are running, sir. Charges my Tira ears with the bayonet. I ran them mostly out. Well, that was a good uh, a good bayonet charge by those Fusiliers. Unfortunately, they did so under canister fire. Now watch this. He's going to try to charge the battery. But look how slow they become once they enter this riverbed. Ooh, that's a slowed unit. 
And then by the time they get up, look, they're all dense. Oh, that canister is going to rip them up. Oh, and they didn't even route. They shattered. Boom, done. Look where all the Norwegians died, right at the top of the riverbed. Knowing how to use these natural defensive uh, features in the terrain can really change how things happen. If this was flat ground, this unit may have been here, and maybe these guns wouldn't have fired, but because of how slow they were going across that riverbed, that's what happens. And that's not Mobster's fault, that's just the terrain. Get some really nice bombardment shots off on these guys, really poke some big old holes in these Norwegians. But I'm going to take casualties from these Yelling Jaegers the entire goddamn game. And I'm going to try to deal with them just throwing some Dragoons at them, but it's not going to do it. The Spaniards had a really interesting fight over here. They're going to try to barrel through the Swedish lines with everything they have. They're going to just try to push them out with the bayonet. They're going to use the Walloon, the Fusiliers. They're going to try to use their... Uh, um, their guitarres, musketeer units, their extremadora, all that stuff. They're gonna have uh, Gregorio Garcia de la Cuesta nearby. What a friggin' bombastic name that is. They're gonna try to have these really oh, good units inside. nearby. Yeah, there goes the Dragoon unit I tried to use for the Sielans. These really good units move in to assist, including a uh, depleted, albeit, but still Grenadier Battalion from the Danes detached to support. But it's just, it's just too much. It's too much. Gregorio gets caught out by the carabineers of the Swedish cavalry. And that's effectively going to seal the deal for the Spaniards. Spaniards cannot work without a general. Their morale is simply too low. And that is a historical reality. They had pretty shoddy morale overall. The army was routed routinely. In the fight, the, at, the individual Spanish soldier was quite good. But the problem was, it was just the, the general overarching esprit de corps of the army. And so when you lose that that head, it's hard to come back from it. So now the fight has officially shifted to the right. With the Spanish general gone, these units are really no longer of a real threat, especially considering how fresh that Grenadier uh, regiment is in that house. Now it's all over here. The Grenadiers are going to try to go in, but they're overextended. I've got three units to their one with a bunch of supporting infantry, artillery, now this is a really cool show over here. Unfortunately, I was so busy worrying about this and getting this coordinated, I didn't try to micro and deal with these sharpshooters. Again, Mobster just really making me hurt with these sharpshooters. The whole game, these guys were just whittling down my center the whole freaking game, and I gotta move three battalions up to try to push them back a little bit and buy me time. But this is really cool. Um, unfortunately, I should have moved these two battalions of Fusiliers to join this, or at least one of them. I think I just didn't have the proper manpower concentrated, but I am going to concentrate on my right, and I'm going to do a bit of a, a, a class attack column maneuver. I've got my conscripts in front of me. They're going to lead the way forward. I've got my French tirailleurs right now screening the... Oh! Oh! Oh, man, that, that Danish howitzer really blown a big chunk of out of the uh, conscripts. That's a fantastic hit. Got my tirailleurs screening the development of the column, the young guard moving in, 18th Regiment of Line. Sult is going to come over. He is over, actually. I've got my last cavalry, reliable full cavalry on the right. Danish lifeguards, of course, moving in. But I'm noticing a thing here. Look, this is a thin line. And if I press on one specific part, we're going to create a hole. And you can see what's happening here. I'm going to have my column move forward. Now, this is a dangerous situation. Column formations are exceptionally susceptible to artillery, as you saw with this conscript unit getting a massive hole blown in the center of it where nearly a dozen conscripts were torn to pieces by a single shell. If this attack column suffers two direct hits from a howitzer, they won't be combat operational for a few seconds. I gotta give them time to get their shit back together before I can rely on them to be in a bayonet charge. So I'm gonna move my army forward together in unison on the right, and I'm gonna try to push the Norwegian brigade back. I'm a little uncomfortable with how close he's getting to this four-pointer. I'm going to try to deal with it. Unfortunately, I don't countercharge these lifeguards of horse too quickly, and I screw up my clicking, so I only get a partial charge off. But it's not really enough to do anything, and these lifeguards of horse are going to chew up my Cheval Leger in melee. These guys have like five melee or something. It's a glass cannon unit. Lancers aren't good at melee. But I will position Sult nearby to at least keep them in combat. And this is where Mobster is very good. Mobster sees this charge coming through the smoke, and he's going to retreat. 
Some men will be caught. Oh. Some men will be caught. But the vast majority of the battalion is going to stay. And here becomes the problem. This grenadier unit is overcharging. And I have to pull it back because I don't want to overextend it. If they continued charging, they would have been caught out. And some of these units could have hit them on the flank. And that would route this massive column of angry fusiliers. But this is the value of, of um, this game, is you can recreate these historical moments where what you're seeing... I'm going to pause this, because this is such a good moment that happens here. I don't think people really appreciate what you just saw. A lot of people would probably watch what just happened here, where I do my charge of my assault column, my conscripts move forward, and I create this little kind of formation here. And they'll say this was a failed charge, you didn't catch the unit out. Historically, with due respect, that is an incorrect interpretation of what happened here. This was a successful bayonet charge. Specifically because, while bayonet fighting was common, it was common in the Napoleonic Wars. Bayonets were used very frequently. Most armies relied on the shock of the attack column to uh, do an advance. Including the British, as a matter of fact. The British charge was, was very effective if, you know, when they decided to use it. You didn't charge with the intent of getting in the melee. You charged giving the threat of melee to the enemy. And the enemy would either stand and it would become a, a basically a game of chicken and then possibly develop into a bloody brawl if need be but that was rare one side would usually stop or give way or just flatly rout what the norwegians did here is the historical reality what you saw was a very obviously not one-to-one -one scale because in napoleon total war you can only be so historically accurate but what you just saw here was an exceptionally historically accurate moment the charge really didn't connect. The only reason those men stayed is because that's the way the game is coded. These men who died here, um, this is where the Grenadiers connected. These men in real life would have about faced with the Fusiliers and they would have run back as well. This was a very astonishingly historical result for this charge over here on the right. I am not at all upset that this didn't connect because this is what I wanted. I didn't charge with the intent of killing. If I got in, then yeah, a lot of guys would have died. But I charged with the intent of giving breathing room to my artillery and this four-pointer. And look at how far back the Norwegians are going to fall. This is, I think, to me, my favorite part of this battle. Just this, like, 30-second action here. And to be honest with you, this is probably why I wanted to show this replay. This is a cool moment here where the Swedes are marching under fire. And they have to secure this town. There's a lot of really cool gameplay. But this little snippet where this is probably one of the most historically accurate things I've seen in this game... It's it's so good. It's so hard to catch these moments in, in such clarity where you could see the gears turning in the players' minds where I'm thinking aggressively and Mobster sees what's happening and he's going to preserve his force and retreat back. Inadvertently, we've recreated 200 years later in a video game a bunch of nerds hanging out you know, in, in the confines of their own home during a, a global pandemic, a situation from the Napoleonic Wars in our own way. Life is great. And yeah, you could see them pulling back, giving ground. My artillery's going to hammer them as they retreat. I'm going to get some parting shots off. But i got to be careful now because uh, my, my young guard... Oh, whoa, right down the center. My 8-pound battery, that's a big hit. I'm going to lose a lot of guys. And the morale is instantly going to start wavering. And i got to pull back now. I forced the Norwegians back. It's going to give them... A little bit of a second guess here. And this is the thing, is I'm not pushing forward to hold that ground. I'm just buying myself some breathing room. Buying myself some breathing room. But I'm not going to make the same mistake twice of not having enough manpower. And you will see that later. Spaniards have now sallied out of the town and they're going to encircle and break the Spanish army. Carabineers are actually... I did not see this before, and I, I watched this replay um, uh, before I began recording to uh, kind of familiarize myself with the action a little bit and be able to give better commentary. And I noticed this charge for the first time in that review, and uh, it was just... This is a textbook case of why you want to preserve your cavalry, because when you have units like this in these moments where things are really in the balance... That seven-pound howitzer hit the shit out of my conscripts, and having this cavalry unit here is going to save so many lives in the French side. It's just going to make life that much more difficult for the Danes. So this was a really cool moment. 
So while I'm reorganizing my line here and I'm going to pull uh, these two Fusiliers, I've learned my lesson. These two Fusiliers that were here being shot by the Seattle and Jaegers are going to be pulled off to my right. And they're going to provide all of my manpower here. And I'm going to make the same charge, but I'm going to do it the differently victory, by having sir, more men. While that's happening, we have a really cool action on my left flank with the Danish elite brigade of uh, lifeguards afoot with Queen's Life Regiment afoot, backed up by some Fusiliers and mobsters. Always fantastically micromanaged Salem Jaegers. Now, the Jaegers were just in canister range. Canister range from this battery, this uh, artillery IPA battery, was quite literally the corner of this unit. If these four guys had died, the unit would have been out of range of canister. But because they were there, I could click them. And I was like, you know what? I can click them. Let's do it. So I'm just going to start sieving canister balls through this unit. And you're going to see some men drop. Look at that. Losing handfuls of men each time, and that's going to make my guys stay and survive a little bit longer. Charge of the left guard's a foot, and this becomes a confusing situation because I think he's pulling off here, but he's not. And then my guys do this weird charge, and everybody's doing this weird charge. No one knows really what's happening. It's a very strange thing. Napoleon Total War's AI can be really screwy sometimes, but he decides better. He's going to pull away. But now I'm going to pull away. But the problem is, is now your charge re the, the, the charge has a cooldown of, I believe, one or two minutes. So while he's not charging anymore, you can see he's just running in the battle. My charge is not going to be as effective as the Queen's Life. And these Fusiliers are going to really start getting punched down hard. Canister ripping through these guys even more. Shooting my eight-pound battery with his sharpshooters. I've got to throw the young guard over here to try to deal with him. But a very shaky situation here because he's got two very elite regiments charging three of mine. I think it was purely because I had the numbers on this side is what did it. But I'll be damned. This was, uh, I, this was butt puckering for me. I was really hoping that this flank didn't fall because if this fell, I was going to have to throw reserves over here. And that would weaken my column on the right. And you could see... Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. Now, bearing in mind, the same natural barrier that slowed him down is going to slow me down. You can see where the conscripts died entering the, uh, entering the uh, riverbed. But I've got the numbers here now. Look at how many guys I have online. Concentrating my force for the attack. Over here on the right, I am going to route the life regiment, but he's going to charge cast and shield in. I briefly targeted him because he was basically the closest unit at that point, but then I switched back to trying to canister lifeguards afoot. I was looking over here so much, I just thought, oh, the lifeguards afoot have wrapped around by where the flag is, but unfortunately, I'm going to canister some of my own guys in the back. Whoa. I take a lot of casualties on my own that way, but I'm going to make these guys waver. Cast and shield charges under the flank. Problem is, is that's going to cause a morale chain where I'm going to route one unit. My own canister has already wavered them. The other unit's going to route, and the other unit's going to route. All three of my units, despite winning that, are going to route. They are going to come back, though. They do come back. My Chevaux Leger are going to run over to try to deal with it. Spain has been mopped up at this point, and my attack on the right is beginning in earnest. My young guard, again, they, as I said before, they don't play too pivotal of a role in this game and i think that was probably a mistake i think i should have maybe been a little more aggressive i probably could have charged and routed this fusilier unit but i was feeling cautious again that would have been a massive overextension these guys would have been out on their own i wasn't really that confident about it i'm gonna move my tira years up to just challenge these jaegers again my micro is over here so my placements aren't the most accurate now this is less a, a proper column like I did before, this is more of, uh, I guess, a mixed order is what they would call that in the uh, in the original French uh, French order mixed, if I recall correctly. And obviously, the pronunciations. I've just stopped trying at this point. I think my best impression of uh, mixed order in the original French would be what is it, order mixed? I'm not too sure. Got to kind of swallow the R on the way down. But I've got columns with line in front, conscripts deployed to my left to soak up the fire from those sharpshooters, my artillery firing just until the last second. Chevalier's errors get routed by these Jaegers. These Sjellin Jaegers finally routed, but god damn, they stayed for a long time. They took so many volleys of canister from this artillery at the end. 
you know, the Hibernians came back, so did his Queen's Life, but I think he gets the charge. I think, I for who gets the charge off here? Did we walk into each other? We were so, we, I mean, over here, there's so much happening. Oh, I got the charge off on him. Oh, so that's why. Okay, so I'm going to win that because I have the charge bonus. Yeah. And I think here I'm still firing just because I forgot. And there's a bug where if you fire canister, they'll keep firing canister no matter how far they are. Oh, I switched to ball, I think, at this point. Yeah, and I was trying to hit these guys on the right. You have these fusiliers. Very crazy battle. He charges and grenadiers to my conscripts here on the right. So he's going to try to get me a false start to my assault column. And I'm busy over here microwing these young guard. My camera's facing this way, so I don't see the life of horse wing around on my right. He's going to totally uh, move around uh, some weird AI glitch here. Move around and hit Sultan in the back. Which I'll notice almost immediately. I'll pop a rally. when you'll, That's all the stars going off. I'm popping the rally to keep him in the battle. I'm going to start trying to run him to safety. I'm going to form a square with my attack column, which is unfortunate. Because now they're shooting into the back of my fusiliers. So I'm suffering a bunch of casualties there. Sult running into here. Because if Sult died, this attack would not be possible. I need my general here for the morale support. The only way I can keep up an assault like this against a defending enemy is with morale. And the Grenadier column, here's the thing, they got 314 guys left. If you do the math, 314 divided by 4 is 80-something men. The reason I'm telling you this is because when you're in a square, each side can fire independently. Square has four sides, each side represents 25% of your firepower in this battalion firing at will. These lifeguards of horse are basically point blank being shot at by nearly 100 dudes. And that's what shattered them. But they're going to come back pretty quick and then continue rounding because they're so far behind enemy lines. Artillery's nearby. They've just taken a bunch of casualties. They're not long for this world. Interior has got to pull back. But this is where the assault really begins happening. I've had it at this point. These conscripts are going to run. But I kill the grenadiers. And this is going to force them to give more and more ground. And I'm going to move up swiftly. My 18th Regiment of Line moving in. I think I inspired this unit, if I recall correctly. And they intercept this charge with that unit. Oh, man. Just a chunky charge. He's going to feed men in. And what that's going to do is that's going to let me throw stuff in here. And, and I think because I inspired these guys, they were mostly fresh. They were impetuous. I had a lot of men. And these guys are relatively depleted. They're not long for this world. And see, this is how you do a charge, basically. is You keep your units nearby. Keep men in fighting contact with one another. French conscripts finally clearing out these goddamn sharpshooters in this friggin' garden. 21 minutes left in the game. The Swedes have now pulled into the rear of, this, of the Danish line. And if I didn't get them, the Swedes were going to. And that's really all she wrote. I will slow-mo the game. That's basically it. That is the end of the game. A good little 40 minute, almost little engagement here. Really, 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 really awesome battle. I thoroughly enjoyed this. This is, I think, one of the fav my, my favorite battles that I've played. Mobster is always a great player to fight. He just, he's really good with his micro. Probably, I, I would say, you know, certain people in the Discord community play certain armies. Uh, Panama is known as the Spain, pl the Spain player. Um... There are people, uh, my, my friend Lemon, I'm noticing, tends to take the Bavarians or the uh, Swedes. There are certain players who take other countries. Mobster is the Danish guy. Mobster is the guy who always takes the Danes, and he really knows how to screw people up with their Jaegers. He does a great job with them. And so he, besides that, he just, he really knows what he's doing. So it was a really cool fight all along this river to to win this so i i really enjoyed this game he did not make it easy i i bled a lot in this game i lost a lot of men i think if spain didn't hold as long as they did or i uh, i uh, didn't um lose if they held longer than they did this would have been a different outcome on the left i think denmark possibly would have given me much more of a run for my money i think if they didn't have to support spain as much and it's not just like the Spanish player. They had to make a play for the city. They had to do so. If they didn't get the city, then they would have to go through my gun line with the river to my front. And you saw, you saw how that went with this canister on this unit on the river. He, they had to make a gamut for the town. They had to do something to try to get this town. And when that attack failed, 
he had to engage me. And if he could beat me in open battle, that would have won them the game. And I think I just got lucky because by the time they had fought the Swedes and decided to turn the Danish force on me, they were already a little attrited and my force was almost relatively fresh. So I was lucky because I basically got the, uh, the seconds of the battle. So anyway, what else happened? It was really good, really cool. I think the MVP of this game is very, very, very clearly JT on my team. Um, I, I had an easy job. I just had to hold. My job was comparatively easy. He had to maneuver under fire, marching a long distance the hallway, micro units into this town. He had to fight for it tooth and nail. He had to fight a, a, a really almost a two-on-one for the first 10 minutes of the game. JT really was, honestly, truly, without a doubt in my mind, the MVP of this game. I really enjoyed playing this one. I, I, I love, love games like this where they kind of have phases. There's chapters of the battle, the march the kind of uh, running fight through the woods, the seizure of the city, the desperate fighting on the right to try and stop the situation from resolving in the way it did. This little bayonet charge on the right, oh my god, that was just such a... It, that is just something right out of a history book. You know, bearing in mind, of course, the inaccuracies of Napoleon Total War, We'll acknowledge those, but let's not get into it. We all know that this is a game. It's not going to be a perfect one-to-one -one analog for history, but it does a good job of giving some semblance of an impression. That, in my mind, I can imagine what this would have looked like in real life with, you know, hundreds more men, you know, even more crap happening. It would have been so cool to just visualize that and kind of go from there. So, just so many great moments in this battle. I ran the numbers before uh, the my team, the French and the Swedes combined, had about 68,000 uh, 68, men. I'm sorry. Wow. 68,000 men. Yeah, 68,000 men. Jesus Christ. We had 6,800 and change men. I think it was almost 6,900, but don't quote me on that. The Danes and the Spaniards had about 6,400 men. If you do the numbers on that one, that's basically the difference of my Tirayur unit and a unit or two of conscripts. The conscripts really made the numerical difference here. I don't think they defined... Well, they did define my flank battle for sure because they were a maneuver piece for me. But if you look at what got the most kills in my army, and I'm not showing you this to gloat, but my army um, did a lot of damage, obviously. Um, but we really got most of our kills here from the cavalry engagement with these dragoons here and then the fusiliers and the braves engaged in melee the attack column really was was the big push but remembering too that basically these three engagements these fusiliers these 18th regiment and the attack column most of their fighting only happened in like the last five minutes of the game so, you know, really a lot of, you know, uh, what, 214 plus 202, so that's what, 416 plus roughly, so yeah, roughly two, four, six hundred of these kills that I got happened in like the last five minutes of the game. So, you know, I'm, I'm telling you that not to say, oh, look how good I was in the last five minutes, but what I'm trying to tell you is the game was over, and I think at this point the Danes would have retreated, so don't take these as real kills. I personally see these kills as enemies forced to retire. Because there really isn't a surrender mechanic in Napoleon Total War. So whenever I win, I always kind of mentally discount the amount we've killed. As, you know, taken prisoner or wounded or forced off the battlefield. There's kind of a narrative element you have to fill in. But anyway, a absolutely fantastic game. Thoroughly enjoyable battle replay. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. And I hope you all stay safe and healthy and warm in this lovely winter we have. Today is January 22nd, 2022. I am Franz Calamari, and I hope to see you again.